Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day everyone. So today I'm going to talk about laboratory evaluations of beta thalassemia. I'm Dr. Norafiza Muhammad Yassin, hematopathologist from Institute for Medical Research Malaysia. I don't have any conflict of interest. This presentation is intended for education or information purposes only and not promotional or marketing exercise for any brand or company. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about interaction of thalassemia, what are the current status of thalassemia in Malaysia, laboratory evaluation of thalassemia followed by case discussion. So we start with introductions and the current status of thalassemia in Malaysia. So what is thalassemia and what is hemoglobinopathies? Thalassemia are heterogeneous group of hereditary hemoglobinopathies that characterize by defect in the alpha, beta, delta, or gamma globin chain. If the mutations lead to reduced synthesis of globin protein, we call that as thalassemia. And the mutations that cause abnormal synthesis of the globin protein, we call this as hemoglobinopathies. And it is um, inherited by autosomal recessive pattern and thalassemia are most common monogenic disorders in Malaysia. And in Malaysia, thalassemia is major public health burden because we know that thalassemia patients, especially thalassemia, transfusion-dependent thalassemia, require lifelong transfusion and also iron chelation to reduce the iron workload as the result of regular transfusion. And most heterozygous, or we call this as straight, are asymptomatic. Some may present with mild hypochromic mycocytic anemia. We can see the picture here. This is actually um, a classical features of thalassemia. We can see here actually um, the classical features of thalassemia phases as the result of extramedullary hematopoiesis. We can see the frontal bossing, then we can see also the maxillary hepipasia, and this is quite rare because of the advancements of the patient diagnosis and management care, this is quite rare, um, a classical feature to be seen nowadays. Yeah, And um, today, I think uh, the probability of surviving up to age of 60 is increased from 60% in 1999 to 80% in 2013. I think we should understand the concept and the pathogenesis of uh, thalassemia for us to understand and um, to determine the severity of the symptoms. Okay. So in normal individual, if we can see in the figure here, the synthesis of alpha and beta globin chain is actually equal. And um, in normal condition, we have HB adult or HBE that constitute of 97% of a total hemoglobin and minority of hemoglobin are HBA2 and also HBF. HBF is only 0.5% and HBA2 is up to 2.5% in normal individual. If we have alpha thalassemia, we can see here reductions in the alpha globin chain that lead to abnormal um, alpha beta uh, globin chain and this cause imbalance. So in alpha thalassemia, if we have excess beta globin chain, it leads to precipitate in the a red cell and lead to chronic hemolysis. It's similar to if we have beta thalassemia, it's caused imbalance of alpha and beta globin chains and lead to the symptoms. This slide showed the current status of thalassemia in Malaysia. Thalassemia is identified as prevalent disease in Malaysia and known to be common in developing countries. It is estimated that around 6.8% of Malaysians are thalassemia carrier and about 9.8% of students were carrier of thalassemia and hemoglobinopathy. To date, there are 8,023 thalassemia patients reported in National Thalassemia Registry as May 2019. And approximately about 70% of them are transmission dependent. We can see here in the figure 2 a distribution of thalassemia patients in Malaysia by diagnosis in 2019. We can see here HBE beta thalassemia account majority of the patients in our population in Malaysia, followed by thalassemia major. We need to understand that 
the total number of patients that we captured in Malaysian Thalassemia Registry is actually not include the trait. It's only capture the disease cases like a thalassemia major or thalassemia intermediate. For estimation of thalassemia carrier in Malaysia, um, a type of carrier like alpha zero thalassemia, alpha plus thalassemia, uh, have different estimations of carrier uh, percentage. Um, alpha zero account for about three to nine percent, and alpha plus is uh, more common in our populations like um, alpha three point seven. Uh, the prevalence is about up to 29% and for non-delusional like HSB constant spring uh, reported the prevalence of up to 6%. For beta thalassemia, um, it's reported the estimation of carrier in Malaysia is about 4 to 9% and the prevalence are different among uh, uh, reported uh, among studies and the difference are because of uh, they are studying a different population and sometimes it's um, the prevalence reported as uh, based on ethnic specific and the uh, different in denominator. And for hemoglobin E, um, it's common in our population. It's up to 40% of our populations affected by hemoglobin E. That's why we can see in Malaysia, a majority of our uh, Malaysian thalassemia registry reported hemoglobin E compound with beta, E beta thalassemia. It's more common as compared to uh, beta thalassemia major. The slide showed the disease burden in Malaysia. Uh, we can see here Sabah is actually the highest state that reported a uh, higher number of thalassemia cases that account for 22.72%. And in Sabah itself, um, the commonest mutations affecting their population is actually large deletion. We call that a Filipino deletion that involve a 45 KB deletion. And it's more common and unique in uh, their population, which is Kadazan Dusun. Um, followed by Selangor, that account for 14.64%, and also Kedah. Uh, Kedah also has unique um, mutations because uh, the geography locations of Kedah is located in the border of uh, Thailand, so that the mutations um, affecting their population is almost uh, equal or similar to Thailand. And we can see here um, uh, HPE, HPE thalassemia uh, is quite common reported in Kedah. This is the distribution according to ethnicity and geographical region. We can see here in the, um, Peninsular Malaysia, most of the uh, affected uh, thalassemia cases are Malay individuals or Malay ethnicity. As compared to Sabah, as I mentioned, uh, they have the highest incidence of thalassemia. But the ethnic group that affecting um, thalassemia, affected by thalassemia, is Kadazan Dusun. And in Sarawak, it's almost equal to Peninsular Malaysia. Most of them are actually um, Malay, uh, followed by Chinese population. Uh, for the incident of beta thalassemia, historically, the prevalence of beta thalassemia has been highest in the Mediterranean region. Uh, Middle East and Southeast Asia and lowest in Northern Europe and North America. Um, due to a migration pattern, we can see a changing pattern in the epidemiology of beta thalassemia. And uh, beta thalassemia is increasingly more common in non-endemic regions like uh, Western Europe and North America. And actually, multiple factors, not only migration pattern, uh, multiple factors contribute to this change epidemiology like um, uh, implementations of beta thalassemia prevention program, improvement of the screening, uh, mixed marriage, and etc. Uh, we can see here in Malaysia, um, as I mentioned in previous slide, the prevalence of beta thalassemia uh, varies among uh, study reporting uh, reported, and we can see here in Malaysia it's up to. Uh, 4.5 to 25 percent, and this 25 percent is actually uh, a study from uh, Kadazan Dusun populations. And we can see also 
a different uh, prevalence of uh, thalassemia among other countries like uh, Thailand. Um, the incidence of beta thalassemia is quite high, it's up to 9%. Yeah? And also in Laos, it's up to 9%. Uh, Indonesia also quite highest number of uh, thalassemia where it's reported as uh, as high as 10% uh, of the populations affected by beta thalassemia. Okay, now we move to a laboratory evaluations of thalassemia. Um, National Thalassemia Screen Program uh, was initially started by our former health minister, YB Dr. Chua Sorile, in 2004. And there are few specific objectives to this National Thalassemia Screen Program that involve four students. First is to strengthen screen service for thalassemia among siblings and other family members of index cases, like cascade screening, to provide screening for thalassemia in targeted population, which is a 16-year-old or pregnant woman, to provide public education on thalassemia, to provide genetic counselling services at primary healthcare level, to upgrade and expand screening and diagnostic laboratory services, and to plan and develop prenatal diagnostic services. This figure shows the laboratory approach for carrier detection and diagnosis. Uh, we can divide it into a presumptive diagnosis and also a confirmatory diagnosis. Um, for presumptive diagnosis, we can uh, divide further into primary screening and secondary screening. What are primary screening uh, tools used for thalassemia diagnosis? Yeah? So we have a full blood count. We use hemoglobin level and also MCH value. What is MCH? MCH is actually mean corpuscular hemoglobin. So if the hemoglobin is normal, but patient had hypochromic uh, microcytic uh, red cell, uh, MCH of less than equal to 27, together with the MCV value, the red blood cell value, and also uh, red cell distribution width, we will take these uh, parameters as a primary screening uh, for us to suspect and for us to further uh, to a secondary screening. And uh, for secondary screening, we have a red blood cell morphology when we can see the from full blood picture, we can see the hypochromic microcytic uh, features of a red cell. Um, then we will actually proceed with a hemoglobin analysis by either capillary electrophoresis or HPLC. Both methods actually quantify and qualitatively um, um, uh, analyze the hemoglobin fraction. Um, to hemoglobin A2, hemoglobin F, and HB pattern analysis. Uh, we do have a supplementary test um, in a certain condition like H inclusion. It's useful tools to determine alpha thalassemia, especially uh, HBH disease or blood. And cycling tests are very useful in uh, to determine whether uh, that case is actually sickle cell anemia. Or actually, uh, we do have also a pattern in CE and HPLC, similar pattern um, with presumptive diagnosis of sickle cell. But when we did a sickling test, it's negative. And when do sequencing, it's actually HB Makassar. Um, so it's it is uh, quite useful tools uh, to differentiate between sickle and HB Makassar. And for reticulocyte counts, hand bodies, and clear hair tests, also a useful tool uh, to differentiate between the uh, type of thalassemia. For confirmation tests or definitive diagnosis of thalassemia, it requires molecular analysis. Um, but in Malaysia, uh, we are not proceed or we are not diagnosed all thalassemia by doing a molecular diagnosis. Yeah? Um, for a classical beta thalassemia, a classical hemoglobin variant, the hemoglobin E, does not require molecular confirmation. If a patient had a hypochromic microcytic anemia with a HbA2 level of more than 4%, usually we can diagnose as beta thalassemia straightforward from the uh, HB analysis either by CE or by HBLC. Um, but in case like borderline E2, um, we do have cut off 3.3% to 3.9% uh, for us to take as a borderline HB thalassemia. We will proceed all the cases with a molecular test because we can't confirm uh, the case 
we can label the case as a beta thalassemia before we proceed with molecular diagnosis because um, in our local data uh, we found that more than 40% uh, is actually normal whereas 60% um, in a borderline cases of thalassemia uh, has abnormal mutations yeah so we need a molecular confirmation for borderline cases of HbA2 thalassemia. Um, other than that, a molecular diagnosis uh, required in the case of confirmation of variant or hemoglobinopathy for alpha thalassemia with MCH less than 25 because in our country, um, we use a cutoff of MCH less than 25 to determine uh, alpha zero thalassemia. Um, we will, uh, we probably will miss the alpha plus thalassemia but um, this is actually uh, this is due to our uh, financial constraint um, we are not able to detect all alpha plus thalassemia but we uh, aim to detect alpha zero thalassemia okay um, for cases like high hbf uh, a differential like HBFH or delta beta, a prenatal test or genetic counseling, and unstable hemoglobin or high and low affinity hemoglobin, we do a molecular analysis to confirm the diagnosis. This figure shows the algorithm for voluntary and cascade screening in our population. This is from Malaysian CBG. Um, basically, um, in our population, uh, our national screening program is actually involved in for screening, but we do have a voluntary screening or cascade screening. So for voluntary screening like uh, walk-in uh, populations, um, we do have uh, provide a pre-test counselling and we took full blood count. As I mentioned before, we took uh, the level of MCH less than 27 uh, with normal hemoglobin. Uh, we will further proceed with uh, secondary analysis. In the case of low hemoglobin uh, and low MCH less than equal than 27, we will suspect patient had iron deficiency anemia first before we proceed with a uh, second method or second uh, test. Okay, So we will treat actually uh, the, the individual with uh, iron um, challenge for about three months before we um, take back the full blood count and see whether uh, whether this is uh, iron deficiency or actually a thalassemia. If patient is iron defi deficient, uh, typically the hemoglobin level will be raised, will be normalized, and also the MCH level. But sometimes um, it's not uncommon to see uh, a low hemoglobin, um, I mean, uh, concurrent iron deficiency with thalassemia in our population. Okay. This figure is actually from standardization in hematology test reporting in MOH lab. Uh, we can see here, actually, uh, this is actually the criteria that we take into consideration uh, from a first line, HPLC or CE, uh, for a presumptive diagnosis of thalassemia. For example, uh, if we have a classical beta thalassemia trait, which is the A2 level of 4 to 7%, we will report the HP analysis as uh, beta thalassemia. Um, but in the case of borderline A2 uh, thalassemia, as I mentioned before, um, we took cut off 3.3% to 3.9%. Uh, we need to further to molecular diagnosis to confirm the diagnosis because most of the case or um, around 40% of the case is actually normal. So we need to confirm by DNA analysis. Um, other than that, um, HPF level also is important tools, important parameters that take into consideration in the case of uh, presumptive diagnosis of HPFH or delta beta thalassemia. And we can add a supplementary test, for example, Clay-Howard test, to differentiate between HPFH and delta beta. However, it still requires DNA analysis to confirmation. And certain variants like uh, high affinity hemoglobin or any variant require two methods because some of the variants will elute it in separate zone in HPLC and different features in capillary retrophoresis. And by doing uh, both methods, we can um, we can actually um, uh, come up with a presumptive diagnosis with type of variant, whether this is alpha variant or beta variant or more specific variant for us to further into uh, to guide into um, further tests in DNA analysis, actually. 
For benefit of juniors, let me explain the peripheral blood film of thalassemia cases. Okay, so this figure showed a hypochromic microcytic red cell together with target cell, and also this is a pencil cell. As compared to this, we can see here, even eyeball, we can see here uh, a marked difference between two figures. Yeah, so we can see here the the rate or degree of anisopoikilocytosis is actually higher. Uh, the degree of anemia is more severe in this case. This is actually a case of beta tau major where patient require transfusion and this is actually nuclear threat cell. Uh, it is released to the peripheral blood because of the marrow stress. Yeah? And uh, this is actually the uh, sickle cell. We can see here, uh, we can uh, found this uh, sickle cell in the case of sickle cell disease or even in tree. Um, in the case of chronic hemolytic anemia like unstable hemoglobin, we can see a basophilic stippling in the peripheral blood and also uh, this is actually uh, H inclusion bodies in the case of HPH disease uh, or um, a deletion type of thalassemia. Not all thalassemia can be detected by HB analysis. Uh, type of thalassemia that can be detected by HB analysis, uh, either by capillary or HB HPLC is actually either uh, beta thalassemia, uh, mutations or deletional type of beta thalassemia. Uh, we can see uh, uh, the rays of HBF level and E2 level. In the classical features of uh, beta thalassemia due to deletions, the E2 level and F level is uh, classically more higher than a mutation type. Whereas uh, in HPLC and delta beta, we can have a raised HBF level, a cutoff of more than 5%. Um, we can see a H peak or butt peak respectively in the case of uh, uh, three or four alpha genes. Um, other hemopathy like um, HB lepo, HBE, sickle, HBC require more than one method because uh, sometimes um, the figure, uh, the features of capillary trophosis are different from HPLC. Yeah, then we need to, uh, to, to further uh, diagnose this variant by doing DNA analysis. The two figures here showed the capillary trophosis uh, feature. Um, we can see in the first case here, the borderline risk of HbA2 with the red cell indices of uh, thalassemia. Um, we need to uh, further um, proceed with DNA analysis to confirm the diagnosis yeah, for this case. Um, as contrast to this uh, classical type of beta thalassemia where the HbA2 level of more than 4% with hypochromic microcytic uh, features. So we can see that this is a uh, beta thalassemia based on HB analysis itself. Uh, this capillary electrophoresis showed a different zone. Uh, we have zone 1 to zone 15 yeah, in this capillary electrophoresis and each zone actually uh, for example this is actually zone 2 has their own library okay zone 2 uh, typically hbc like constant spring uh, hb uh, swan river and etcetera um, for zone uh, 5 uh, we can have a uh, HB sickle, HB aria, and different 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 uh, uh, HB variant that eluted in this uh, similar zone. Okay, and also similar with zone twelve, there are several of uh, variant that listed under this uh, library. For HPLC, basically they use a uh, different retention time to level or to separate the variant, yeah, or to separate the hemoglobin type. Uh, for example, HB constant spring, usually the retention time range from 4 point something to 4 point something. Uh, HBA eluted at 2.4, HB part is actually and H is actually at pre calibration peak, and etc. So um, each hemoglobin has their own retention time, but few uh, hemoglobin still overlap. That's why we can use either CE and HPLC to confirm the diagnosis of. Uh, to confirm the diagnosis of thalassemia and still require DNA analysis. Yeah? So moving to a molecular basis of thalassemia. Genetic classification of thalassemia. So um, for alpha thalassemia, uh, if the mutations happened at uh, alpha globin gene, we call it as alpha thalassemia. If 
uh, mutations occur or deletion occur at beta thalassemia at beta globin gene, we will call this as uh, beta thalassemia. And for beta globin gene, uh, we have a cluster of beta globin uh, gene which is involved HBB, HBD, and gamma. Whereas in alpha globin gene cluster, we have HBA1 and HBA2 gene, also the pseudo gene. Yeah? Alpha globin gene located in chromosome 16, whereas um, HBB gene located in chromosome 11. Um, this is actually HBA gene. Uh, we do have HBA1, HBA2, and HBZ, HBZ. And each of the gene will produce alpha globin gene uh, protein. Um, and actually, uh, if we sequence HBA1 and HBA2, um, the sequence is actually almost all the same, only different in certain uh, part of the gene. Um, but the, the dominant um, alpha globin gene is actually HBA2. So a mutation affecting HBA2 lead to more uh, severe um, uh, quantity reductions of the uh, globin gene protein as compared to the mutation happen in HBA1 gene. Yeah? Um, similar to beta globin gene cluster, in beta thalassemia, um, the mutation happen in HBB gene. If the mutation happen in HBB gene and HBD gene, uh, we call this as uh, delta beta thalassemia. If it's involved beta delta and gamma, we call this as uh, gamma delta beta thalassemia. Yeah. For us to explain a genotype phenotype correlation, we need to understand uh, where is actually the mutation happen, yeah? especially in beta thalassemia. Uh, in HBB gene, um, it consists of uh, three exons, uh, exon 1, 2, and 3, and two intervening sequence. And this is from motor region, 5' uh, UTR, and this is uh, 3' UTR or poly A region tail. Um, so each of the each of the mutations um, can happen in in any of this region. For example, um, a mutation that happen in promotogenic region will typically cause a mild raise in A2 level, a mild type of beta thalassemia phenotype, as compared to mutation that happen in the intervening sequence because intervening sequence is important for splicing sites, and also uh, as on three. Uh, for example, uh, mutation that happen in exon 3 usually cause a dominant uh, inherited uh, beta thalassemia um, and etc. So, um, knowing this is very important for us to correlate with the phenotype severity of the patient in beta thalassemia, particularly. This figure explains uh, more details on point mutations of beta thalassemia. As I mentioned before, this is a promoter gene, this is exon region, this is intervenic sequence 1, intervenic sequence 2, and this is where the junction between intervenic sequence and also the exon, this is actually the, uh, the, the junction between that, that is important for splicing site, this is a poly A region, this is a promoter region. Uh, the mutations happen in promoter region typically cause mild beta plus thalassemia with a borderline risk in HBA2 level. So characterizing of each mutation is very important for the understanding of genotype phenotype correlations. Um, mutation happen in intervening sequence like IBS11 uh, here, located here, uh, or IBS15, typically like um, uh, that typically cause uh, beta-0 thalassemia, yeah? Uh, for uh, a mutation that happen in exon 3, usually will cause a uh, dominant uh, inherited beta thalassemia. And also, um, mutation in poly-A, this uh, poly-A region will cause mild beta thalassemia, yeah? For beta thalassemia, um, in Malaysia, estimated carrier for beta thalassemia is about uh, 3.5 to 4%, and the interaction of HBE beta is uh, very common, and some of the uh, study reported up to 40%, and some of 
uh, study reported as high as 50%. And uh, to date, more than 900 sequent variants reported in HBVAR. This is a recent assess in October 2023. And usually, uh, beta thalassemia diagnosed by uh, HBA fraction quantifications, like uh, beta thalassemia, a classical beta thalassemia, we took a cutoff 4 to 7%, a borderline uh, cutoff 3.3 to 3.9%. Certain uh, country has different a cut off. It's based on their own data and they will determine their cut off based on the um, population. And a minority of uh, beta thalassemia are due to deletion uh, of HBB gene and uh, HBB and HBD or entire HBB and some uh, beta thalassemia rarely uh, involve locus cluster region uh, deletion. This is a study from uh, Professor Elizabeth George. Um, the study mentioned about uh, beta thalassemia alleles in Malays and Chinese in Malaysian populations. Uh, this study well characterized um, uh, mutations according to ethnic specific. As I mentioned, uh, thalassemia are very uh, ethnic and geography specific. Um, in Malaysia, we have a unique um, ethnic, we have uh, multi-ethnic populations that consists of majority of us are Malays, followed by Chinese, and in uh, Sabah, Sarawak, we can have uh, Kadazan Dusun in Sabah, and Sarawak, we have Iban uh, among the common indigenous group in their population. So, in among Malay itself, uh, HBE in IBS15 is more common, uh, plus IBS11. Um, and for Chinese, Malaysian, uh, typically code 1442, IBS2, 654, minus 28, code 17, and etc. Um, that account for more than 90% of beta thalassemia. And most of them are actually beta 0, um, yeah, uh, except uh, IBS2, 654, and minus 28. It's actually beta plus phenotype. Uh, for Kadazan Rusun, as I mentioned in previous slide, uh, 45 KB deletions is actually common among their Kadazan Rusun. It's a unique uh, mutation um, in their population. Um, and more unique in Iban, I think um, it's not carry uh, beta uh, mutation determinants. More um, in Iban, more reported of alpha thalassemia yeah, among their population. These are the common uh, allele of thalassemia allele in Malaysia. Uh, most common is actually alpha 3.7, yeah, followed by 4.2. Uh, for C deletion, uh, for two gene deletions, the more common in our population is actually C deletion, and less commonly is Thai and Filipino deletions. And for non deletional thalassemia, most commonness in our population is Western Spring, and quite a number of Adana and Kwangzi reported in our population. And this diagram actually uh, shows us the deletions uh, spanning regions of each uh, uh, of deletion type of thalassemia in our population. This is the study from uh, Institute of Medical Research from uh, Dr. Rahimah et al. Um, we can see here actually among Malays, uh, most common alpha determinant is alpha plus, which is 3.7 deletions. Um, and for Chinese, a more common uh, alpha determinant is alpha zero, um, that uh, common among their population. And we can see uh, reported hydrophytal is more common among Chinese population because a C deletion is more common among them, yeah, as compared to Malays. Um, what are available uh, molecular genotyping or analysis in our country, our populations, yeah? So uh, now we have a list, a battle of tests available in our populations. Um, and uh, we need to have the balance between a, a mutation spectrum of our population. Um, we need to balance with the cost and also the turnaround time, yeah, the suitability of the test uh, according to certain uh, uh, locality. A um, few of the uh, listed molecular analysis is actually for targeted uh, panel and for unknown uh, deletions yeah, or mutations. For for example, uh, reverse drug blood are used, um, being used in Hospital Kuala Lumpur uh, for detections of um, 
mutations uh, in beta thalassemia and certain type of deletions. It's type of targeted panel and negative with reverse of blood will further uh, they will further send to Institute of Medical Research for beta thalassemia genotyping like sequencing. And we do have other specific uh, PCR like us PCR to target certain uh, mutations. Get PCR basically the principle is like to detect a deletion type. Um, and if negative by targeted get PCR, they will move toward MLPA that's screen, a complex HBA gene complex that will able to determine even the uncharacterized deletions. Uh, next generation sequencing is um, uh, tools, uh, new tools that we are optimized. Um, it's can simultaneously detect um, alpha and beta gene simultaneously. Um, few panel can able to detect a gamma and part of delta globin gene, yeah? And few of modifier that able to, uh, I mean, uh, being used in our populations, in our, our lab is actually SMN1 polymorphism in the case of uh, intermediate thalassemia uh, as a modifier gene, uh, and NT3.7, uh, triplication 4.2, and also MLPE being used to detect uh, amplifications or triplication. Okay, so what are the challenges in the diagnosis of thalassemia? Um, this is actually uh, our practice here. Yeah? For thalassemia diagnosis, uh, we practice stepwise approach. I start from a uh, full blood count, CBC, PBF, HB fraction by HB electrophoresis, and then DNA analysis. So it takes time, uh, it improves, uh, it uh, requires uh, quite I mean, high turnaround time yeah, involved in this thalassemia diagnosis. So um, as I mentioned, we took a cut of less than 27 or equal to 27 uh, MCH of uh, MCV less than 80, then certain criteria of HB electrophoresis to us to uh, forward to a DNA. Okay, from this full black count, we can see a classical features of um, thalassemia. It's either a beta thalassemia carrier or two gene deletion alpha thalassemia. Um, Basically, we can see here the high red cell indices together with normal hemoglobin and uh, significant hypochromate microcytic. So we are not going to miss this case because we are going to perform hemoglobin analysis to differentiate between whether this is beta thalassemia or actually potential alpha thalassemia. When we see these uh, parameters, we can see totally normal food blood count, hemoglobin normal, MCV and MCH so normal. But basically, some of the uh, thalassemia has a normal MCV and MCH, like HB constant spring or even HBE. Um, we may miss the diagnosis, um, even a small percentage, but we uh, possible uh, to miss that particular cases yeah? if we are just rely on the MCV and also hemoglobin level. So we move to a, a case discussion. Um, I mean, just a simple case discussion I have. Uh, seven month old Kadazan Dusun from Sabah. Yeah, the, It's very important for us to know uh, the age of presentations, the ethnicity of the patients, and where is patient locations. Yeah, the, the, uh, the presentation, patient present with TV anemia, no hepatosplenomegaly, and uh, patient has a family history of thalassemia. So uh, this is actually cascade screening. We can see a severe anemia in this case, HB 5.8 with hypochromic microcytic anemia. The F is 99.0%, HB 2 is low, 1.0%, and there's no HBA detected in capillary retrophoresis with minimal amount of HBA found in HBLC with a majority of the HB fraction is HBF. So what is differential diagnosis? So differential diagnosis in this case is actually based on HBLC. We can see F is very high, 99%. Uh, the PBF show marked hypochromic microcytic with a few NRBC seen um, in the sample. Um, and uh, we move to the molecular analysis. Uh, we can see a homozygous beta zero thalassemia identified. We actually uh, correlate the sample with the parent sample, uh, patient parent mutations. 
we confirm this is actually homozygous beta-0 thalassemia, which is homozygous beta-0 Filipino that classically uh, uh, occur in Filipino uh, Cardassian Luzon population in Sabah. So in our report, we usually uh, try to provide a comprehensive molecular analysis by uh, giving a clinical interpretation, so genetic counseling. Also, we do provide the HGBS nomenclature, uh, latest HB, HGBS nomenclature. This is a nomenclature for uh, Filipino deletions or mosaicus type. And this is our DNA code that being used in uh, our population. For example, this is alpha and beta DNA code. NAD is actually normal. HBZ BZ is actually homozygous, beta 0, beta 0. These are a list of my reference.